can you tell me about the lizard? Lizard. I was feeling something on me, and uh, I guess I was convinced, and I had a shirt. It was a shirt. I cut it up. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I, th I thought I actually caught the thing, and I couldn't get it out of the shirt or whatever it was that I was wearing at the time. They come in the woods. Came from the woods. Our, our property has a house with a pond in front. And in the pond, we had, we've, uh, over the years, 20, 25, 30 years, we've uh, fed ducks. They would come in with scoops and scoop all the ducks out. The, the they pond. would scoop the ducks out? Yeah. And you saw them scoop the ducks yeah. out? Well, the red dots, um, I started to notice after I started taking the medication. Um, I thought at first it was just my eyes that were causing the problem. And I was seeing hundreds of these red, little red dots. Although Parkinson's disease is a movement disorder, it's very important for people to understand that behavioral problems also occur in this illness, partly as a direct result of the illness itself and partly as a side effect of the medications we use for treating the movement disorder. Humans have five special senses. They see, hear, smell, taste, and touch things. In each of these special senses, people may experience hallucinations, a false sensory perception of something in the environment that isn't really there. In Parkinson's disease, about 20 to 30 percent of patients who take medications to improve their mobility will have hallucinations. Well, shortly, shortly after I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, uh, strange occurrences would happen around my house. I would see, for example, at, at nighttime, uh, an army assembling across the street, planning the famous battle. I can think of one battle that was MacArthur landing in, in the, in the, coming back in the Pacific. And I said to myself, what the heck is going on here? Another time I pulled in my driveway, the lights were all on in the house, which was unusual because I shut the lights out when I leave. And there was a guy sitting in my living room. I didn't know what the heck to think. Two or three of these people, you're saying, had normal legs, and one guy either mm -hmm. had no legs or had skinny legs. No legs and skinny legs. And you had, and you showed, uh, I think pictures of this with uh, women, with children. There were women with children. And dogs with no tails and you know, all the oddball configuration you could find for, for the last group. So dogs with no tails and oddball configurations. Right. So did they have funny looking heads? Yes. Okay. And the people were, I didn't understand this issue of the people with the skinny legs or the no legs. Were there people who you think actually had no legs? Yeah, they were hovering. Like. They were hovering, okay. Did their heads look normal? No. And how were they not normal? Different configurations here. You know, the chin's over here, the eyes are up here. You mean sort of like a Picasso picture? I don't know what Picasso picture is. Whatever it is. <laughs> okay, so, so they look like they were not real. Do they look like aliens or more like cartoons? More like cartoons. People began appearing. Uh, they weren't normal looking people. Uh, for the most part, they had very red skin uh, and they were very uh, dwarf uh, in size. Uh, they did not speak. They did not uh, eat. They did not have bowel movements. Uh, uh, some would come for a day or two, others would come for a week. Uh, several in particular would stand uh, for three weeks and look at uh, the corner of the room. So they were present continuously for three weeks? They're present now. They're still there? Yes. A, a less in number. And um, since I've been on the, the medicine. additional medication, uh, yeah. Uh, they're greatly reduced in number, uh, but they're in my house. They were uh, outside in my yard digging uh, trees and trenches, and then there was another whole group on the corner of the street that I could see from my house that uh, 
uh, were like uh, Christmas carolers, except they had no clothes on, and, uh, and it was uh, 20 degrees out. The patients who described seeing the people who were small uh, is a common thing that uh, patients describe with Parkinson's. We c often call them Lilliputian for the small world that uh, Gulliver visited. Uh, and the people often look normal, uh, but often they'll be small people. Sometimes they're very tiny. Patients have described uh, seeing families that live in, uh, in house plants, um, and they may be up to mischief or maybe not up to mischief. When, when I am quiet and busy doing things, I see things out of the corner of my eye. And because you told me the medication sometimes causes hallucination, it didn't frighten me. But eventually I give in to curiosity and look, and it's gone. The kind of hallucinations that this woman described are often called passage hallucinations in English or en passage in, uh, in French. And uh, she described them uh, in the classical terms. They're very fleeting. People may see flashes of light or they may see shadows that are in their peripheral field on either side. And when they look to the side to see what this object was, there's nothing there. Do you ever have the feeling, without the visual stimulus, do you ever have the feeling that there's somebody or something either behind you or to the side that you look at? Yes. Yes. So sometimes you'll look I, because there's a visual stimulus. Yes. And sometimes there'll just be a feeling. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. When you have the feeling without the vision, is it ever frightening in any way that there might be somebody or some animal prepared to harm you? Um, no, I don't think it's frightening, but it's concerning that I have to look just to satisfy myself that, that it's just an hallucination or it's, it's not going to bother me. They are in the form of cats and small dogs that come all of a sudden appear, come into the room, run around, and then leave. So I, um, I've experienced this for about three and a half years now. But they're not threatening, so I never felt the need to do anything about it. Did you, at the beginning, did you react to them? Like, did you yell at them or no, act as if? No, not really. No, so you always knew that they were not real. All right. How long do they last when they come? Um, the fleeting. You know, they just kind of maybe a minute or two. The red dots would would uh, basically take my focus, my vision away a little bit. There were so many of them, and then it's if I looked at a wall and I see all these red dots, the uh, dots would start to have like strings attached, little things that would grow from them, and they, they, they go into a three dimensional uh, type of feeling, okay, for a better term. And then uh, when I looked at the, the, uh, at the, at the floor, like a tile floor, I'd have the red dots on the tile floor, and they'd start to grow. It was the strangest thing to, uh, to experience. And then when I saw um, a spot on the floor, that would start to grow and these, these lines would come out from the spot and it looked almost like a um, spider but with many legs and then the thing would start to travel across the floor. The question of how to deal with someone who's having visual hallucinations always comes up. The first thing, in general, is to just reassure the patient that this problem is a medication side effect, that they're not going crazy, 
and that although they see these things and they may look very real, they are not in fact present. It usually is not a good idea to tell the person that you see these things as well or hear these things as well. It's better to just say, no, that's not real. It's a side effect of your medication. They come at night to do the clearing. They were in the woods with, next to my backyard with two uh, weed whackers and the chainsaws trimming down the trees. And uh, I'm surprised that last night, about three o'clock, I guess, they uh, started up their saws and that, and it woke me up. Three in the morning? Yeah. And you woke up? Yeah. And did you still hear the saws when you woke up? Yeah. And when you looked out the window, you could see these people? Last night, yeah. You could. Do these things ever make sounds? No. And if you talk to them, uh, do they respond? Do they pay any attention to you? No. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've, I've <laughs> become familiar with them because it's, it's the same characters uh, uh, pretty much all the time. And I have come home and said, uh, uh, or I said good morning or good evening or something, and they just sort of look through me. Uh, I got to the point where they, uh, where, where uh, it appeared they weren't a threat to me. They, they didn't steal anything. Uh, we, we pretty much leave the house unlocked. And so we, we, in effect, left them in the house all day alone without us. And uh, nothing's missing and nothing is out of place. They don't move things. The presence of hallucinations does not mean that um, new medications have to be introduced or that the old medications have to be reduced, but it is something that the doctor should be aware of and take into account in deciding whether medication should be changed or not changed. Hallucinations often can improve or resolve with a reduction in medications for the movement problems of Parkinson's disease. Sometimes these medications can't be changed, and an antipsychotic drug needs to be added, which is a drug to get rid of the hallucinations. What the treatment should be is really determined by how bothered the patient is by the symptoms and how much they interfere in uh, the person's life. I'm seeing whatever, well, I don't know why I'm seeing these things, but there was a guy came out of my uh, garage and he was walking towards the car, and all of a sudden, he reduced down to a, I think it was a, uh, like a raccoon, and ran under the porch. That was the most bizarre one. Yeah. It was a person coming out of the garage, coming towards the car, and all of a sudden, he just went from that to a raccoon, went under the porch, and... So what was your feeling about that? I mean, that's... Scared. That's, you were scared. scared. Yeah, I was scared. And you were scared because these things were happening, or were you scared because you thought you were losing your mind? Well, I thought that possibly the, the two things. What was causing them was something, some, some, something was happening in my brain that I can't account for. And I was scared of the events that, that I was witnessing. So you thought something bad might happen to you? I did. I, I was convinced, though, I, wasn't, I felt some comfort knowing that I was not the only one that was seeing th similar things. Right. Talking to other doctors. Have you had any hallucinations recently? None. None. Okay. So those hallucinations all occurred a few years ago. They did. So thank you very much. Okay. And because of your phone call, I found out she does have them. Oh, you didn't know about these? No. Well, I don't, I don't talk about them because, you know, I don't want people to think I'm a little loopy or what have That's you. That's what everybody says. That's one of the reasons we're making this video is so oh. that people understand. In your case, they're rather mild, okay, yes. and, they, and you understand them. But there are other cases where they can be not so mild. And mm. as they start off, they, you know, sometimes they progress, okay? Mm -hmm. Not saying that yours will progress, but they right. often. And it's better that people talk about them and understand them because the people who don't understand them are the ones they're afraid to tell anybody because they're afraid people are going to think they're crazy, and then they get worse and worse, and then it causes trouble.
Hallucinations are unfortunately a common problem in Parkinson's disease. They affect about 20 to 30 percent of patients who take medications to treat the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. They're usually visual, that is people see things that aren't there, but sometimes they could be in the other special senses as well, hearing things or feeling things on the skin. The important thing about hallucinations is that the patient must recognize that this is unfortunately part of the disease and its treatment. It does not mean that you're losing your mind. It's important to bring the occurrence of hallucinations to the attention of your treating doctor. They don't always need to be treated. The hallucinations can be relatively benign or very benign, sometimes even enjoyable. But it's important to discuss them with your doctor to see whether a medication change is in order, and also to reassure yourself and your family that you're not losing your mind. Thank you for watching this video.